And now for more on the political stalemate following the third consecutive election, we have former member of Knesset, Rabbi Dov Liebman. All right, so I think the first question, before we get to Lieberman, which is really what I want to be speaking about today, is sure. who will Rivlin give the mandate to? Who has a better chance at forming a government right now? It's close. It's amazing. I was sitting here a week ago on election yeah. night, and we were saying 100% it's Netanyahu. I'm going to say right now, I think we're heading towards the real possibility of Gantz, because let's just talk about the numbers for a moment. Netanyahu has this block of 58. Mm -hmm. But that's where it stops. There's no other potential for him to go beyond the 58. Gans, who's sitting way below that, has his 33 plus seven labor merits. Now Lieberman has said he's going to endorse him. That brings him to 47. All he needs is the endorsement of the 15-seat joint list, and he's at yeah, but and they're and they're discussing that and right discussing now. That okay, today. but hold on. There are two things that I want to say there. I mean, obviously, there is a chance that there will be so-called defectors coming in from blue and white, coming in uh, from potentially the labor gishon merits block to the right. So that's still. A, a feasible option. Or we, we, when, it was, when, it, when it was more like around 60 for Netanyahu, mm -hmm. we thought, okay, he could peel off one. I can just say from the inside right now, there is no discussion of anyone seriously considering joining, especially now that they see some pathway for guns. But let's go back to what you said about the joint Arab uh, list party, yeah. because how mm -hmm. would an Israeli, I mean, theoretically, let's say that they were to join the government. The question then is, how would Israel as a nation function with some of the... How would that government govern? Because yeah. they have so many different opposing viewpoints. Right. So let's take a step back for a moment. Right now we're talking about making a recommendation to the president. So that they can do, and Gantz can accept that recommendation without any major, major ramifications mm -hmm. in terms of their platform. That's step one. So okay. your, your question was, who's going to get the mandate to form That's the government? True. Step one is that. Number two... The joint list doesn't have to actually join the government. All they have to do is vote to support a government. So Gantz can have a government that has 47 seats made up of those three parties, smaller than Netanyahu's bloc, mm -hmm. but as long as he garners the 15 votes of the Arab parties to support that government, he can have a government with 47. And, that, and the, this is the minority government that That's he's That's the minority to government. Now, the joint list, you're correct. There's a long list of demands right. that they would make. And, and would they even, and, yeah, would they even do And would do they this? do it? So, the reason why they might do it is because they see Netanyahu as a big right. obstacle towards whatever their goals might be, and just for the sake of taking Netanyahu down, they might join this effort. Right, but Gantz said right before the elections that there was no way that mm -hmm. he was going to be willing to sit in a government with a, with a joint Arab list. So just um, finesse that for a moment. I won't sit in a government with them. Can okay. I send a government that has support from them? But again, mm. the concerns that you're raising are correct. Listen, they don't officially uh, accept a Jewish state. If he's reliant on them for his government to exist, what kind of demands can they make, even if they're not in the government at that point? I just right. can't help but think about the, the public, which has, I mean, overwhelmingly voted for the right. Okay, sure. and, and where does that put all of these voters? Who is representing them in this type of scenario? In that scenario, their leaders would be in the opposition, as happens sure. in Israeli politics. But keep in mind, for this to happen, Lieberman has to be in cahoots, in partnership on some level with the joint Arab list, or vice, vice versa. Right. The joint list of the Arabs sure. has to work with, the with Lieberman. So let's these, talk are about the, these, are, these are the greatest foes that we've had in well, politics. So, so that's it. So let's, let's talk about Lieberman's sure. conditions for joining yeah. a coalition, which Gantz has apparently agreed to. And yes. that includes raising uh, the minimum wage for the elderly, yep. uh, raising the tr uh, transfer, uh, uh, allowing public transportation to be up to local governments. Uh, yep the Haredi draft, passing the Haredi draft, and a number of other things. Now, the, what, what things would the joint list then demand, and, and would those things work? So yeah. the joint list would say fine with whatever Lieberman wants. On those, it's interesting, Lieberman did not say one word about the joint Arab list right. in, in, in his list of demands. The first thing, when Gantz came out and said, I accept this, mm -hmm. that means that he has eliminated the possibility of the ultra-Orthodox parties right. being part of right. any effort that he makes, because they cannot accept the religion of state sure. demands that, that mm -hmm. Lieberman course, made. Right. So now the and question... the civil that, marriage demands, correct. yeah, exactly. So what we're waiting for right now is, we're not even waiting for any action on Netanyahu's side, because like I said before, he has no place to go beyond the 58 that he has. The question is, what will the joint list decide about the recommendation mm -hmm. and about supporting a government from the outside? Can Lieberman accept that or not? If that somehow works, we might be somehow avoiding a fourth election. But if not, we're on the path towards that. But one more thing. They are also saying they're going to remove the Likud Speaker of the Knesset, Yuli Edelstein, yeah, yeah, with their majority. That gives them control over the parliamentary setting in the Knesset, even if there's no government. And they could pass a law saying someone with an indictment cannot possibly put together a so government. So all these things, so all these things, I understand how the, how there's a lot of truth to that, and there's chances here. Uh, 
but they would still need not only the support from the outside from the Joint Arab List to maintain their minority government, but the Joint List would have to continue supporting their, legisla their and that, legislation. And, and that's the big question, Mark. Can that work? Or, or is yeah, it they, just do they all have just the votes to pass anything or, or, or in is, the end of the or day? Is it, first of all, you're right. And second of all, maybe this is all posturing and a game of chicken to see will somebody on the other side somehow say, we can't have a situation like this, and maybe they'll come over and try to work together. Right. And that's what I keep on, you know, this uh -huh. idea of defectors. I, I don't think that's off of the table. Um, it's yeah, not too late, yeah. We will Anything's see. Possible. All right. Thank you for joining us. Right. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you.